الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده واستعينه واستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا ما يحدي له فلا مضل الله وما يضل فلا هادي الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأتى لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون وأتسموا بحب الله جميعا ولا تفارقوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون وأتسموا بحب الله جميعا I mix this a little bit I pulled some of it out of there because I want to make an impact on us about a very important subject this one of the ayahs that we hear every Juma every Juma you hear Ya Yulid Ina Amanu Taqala Haq Tukatihi Wa La Tumu Tuna Ila Wa Antumu Tumu And we go forward and but do we know what it means? And I don't mean the Arabic I mean the implication behind it Allah is talking to the believers He says all you who have come to the right belief that's Muslims hopefully and He's telling us something very important He said give Allah His rights one of the rights of Allah is that you have taqwa. What is taqwa? People said it's God-fearing consciousness. That's not totally wrong. Some people said it means piousnessness. I don't know what that word is. I only saw it in the translation of Quran, piousness. I don't know what it is. But they also said it means that a person is doing righteous deeds, is a good person, and that's, that's nice too. But the word in Arabic actually is implying that you need to have shelter or a guard or a protection or a shield against something. Now how in the world, it comes in your mind, right? How am I going to get a shield against the law? That does, doesn't make any sense. How did you translate it like that? Well, I didn't actually, the ulama they did. But it, here's what happens when you understand that this taqwa is a shield and then you go back and think, what was it we said in Fatiha? Because everything comes from Fatiha, you know that? Everything comes from that opening right there. You spend time praising Allah. You spend time acknowledging who Allah is. You even say clearly, you and you alone we worship. But then look what you said. It's you we turn to for what? Our guidance. Guide us to the straight path. Okay, now as soon as we get to Surah Baqarah, we find out we need taqwa. If we're going to get guided, because he says, and you know it better than I do, Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Laliku Kitabu Allah Raiba Fi, Hudir Lil Muttaqeen. The book that has in it, no doubt, Hidayah, Huda, for guidance, for who? Muttaqeen. Now what is mutakin? You might think it sounded like mu'minin. It's not. It's mutakin. From taqwa. The people who have taqwa are going to get the hidayah from the Quran. So now whenever you hear Ya Yuladina Amanu, Allah, a shield. Now our youth out here, they know more about this than we do. Because they play video games. And if you ask how many in the youth here never played a video game, it'd be wasting your time, right? Because <laughs> they all did. We all know video games. Monsters are coming, bad guys are coming and shooting flamethrowers and bullets. And so you need to have a shield. And you go to the little uh, game thing and you buy a shield or you use your points and get a shield. And you're shielding yourself against what? Disaster death and so on the Yamukiyama and this is not a game this is for real 
there is something very serious. Go back to Fatiha again. And remember, you said, let us be of the people that have your favor. They're getting all the favors and the goodies from Allah, right? And we say, Nama, the Nama of Allah is coming. We say, we want to be of those people who are getting the Naim from Allah. Then we say, Ghayru Magdubi Alayhim. Not the ones that are getting Allah's what? Anger? It's heavier than that. It's heavier than just anger. Anger, you know, you're at the traffic light, you want to go, somebody pulls in front of you, it gets stuck in front of the traffic light, you're like, oh man, that's anger. But the next level is when somebody jumps out of the car and starts beating up your windshield and going crazy and be tearing up, you know, that's wrath. And this is a translation of gathab, wrath. It means Allah, he's going to be doing something about the anger on that day. You follow it? You with me? That's a day when Allah is going to be delivering that wrath upon those who have abused and misused the opportunity for this life. They have failed in their purpose. Game over. It's very serious. And so this is why we need a shield on that day. And what is that shield? I'm just giving you terms. You, this is not new. This is nothing I'm saying is new. It's another way to look at something for our youth, our young people, to understand how critical it is to know what's going to happen. And it's not a joke. And it's not a game. On that day, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re resurrects, brings everybody back, and every single soul will be brought back. Every single person will be brought back to life again. The good, the bad, and the ugly, and everything in between, the believers, the non-believers, Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Atheists and people that make up their own religions, all of them are going to be brought back. That's good news. Well, some of them thought they were going to just die and float away and be nothing, right? But they'll all be brought back. You know where the problem is? Not everybody gets to go to paradise, do they? And there really is a hellfire. And there's even worse than fire. Fire is bad. But hellfire, Nari Jahannam, this is unbelievable. People there, their skin is burning off and Allah puts skin back on so it can burn off again. This is not a joke. But there's cold there too, that is so cold that it's worse than fire. And nobody ever has a nice day in the hellfire. So, how now do we get the shield? Is it real hard? What kind of points do I have to give up? And uh, what's it going to cost? Well, Allah already told us the answer for that. If I had just kept reading a little bit more into the Surah Baqarah, you'd have found it. Right after the beginning, Let's talk about these three things that are very critical, very, very critical. First, those guys, Aladina, those guys who believe in Al Ghaib. What's Al Ghaib? It's, it's something you can't see, it's the unseen. Now, let's talk to the scientists about this, because they'll say, oh, well, you believe in fairy tales, you don't see God, you don't see the Nari Jahannam, why do you say all this stuff? If I don't see it, I don't believe in it. Some scientists, some atheists, they talk like that, right? Ask them, did you ever see molecules? Most of them have to say the truth. I, I don't know, I never saw them. But you believe in molecules? Did you see atoms? I don't care what kind of microscope they have, they don't have a picture of an atom. Do you know that? 
And did you see the components of an atom? The neutrons, electrons, and protons. Have you seen those things? But you believe that they're there, don't you? Well, yeah. And have you ever seen any of those stars that you're talking about in black holes? Have you really seen them? Do you know what they are? But you still believe in it. So there's a lot of unseen that all of us take for granted every day. But Allah is talking to you about al Ghaib when he's telling you about the Malayaka. Do you believe in angels? You don't see them. But we know they're there. Hellfire. We've been talking about that quite a bit just now, right? We believe in it absolutely. But Jannah, oh yeah. That's where we all want to go. And I'm making it all right now that every single one of all of us are in that Jannah without hisab, without any reckoning. Amin. Amin. All right, now, after believing in al Ghaib, uh, by the way, Allah is also unseen, but we still believe there's a law. We don't have to see Allah to know that He created everything. But after that, it says, and establish what? The Salat. What good is your belief in all of this stuff if you don't do anything about it? And you said Salat. Well, that means to pray, right? No. Yes, it is in a way. Because in Salat you do make Dua, don't you? Yeah. So you pray. Dua is prayer. This, when you do this and go like that and call, this is Dua. This is what it means. And that's what prayer means in English. But this, and facing this way, in wudu, and, 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 this is salat. It's not the same. You have prayer in it, but salat is something else. Look at the Arabic dictionary next time and find out. It actually means like a connection. To make what? Silva. Salat. Connect. Communicate with Allah. You want your prayer to be answered, don't you? Duh. You want to have a good connection and relationship with your Creator? Yes. Okay. That's Salah. And it's not once in a while when you feel like it, is it? Huh? It's not just today, right? Juma, I'll go do Salah. Allah, I'll have to take it or leave it. Oh, that's wrong attitude. By the way, if you do one, He'll give you the reward of ten. And he doesn't have to do that. You do have to do the salah. He don't have to give you any reward at all. But ten times the reward. How about that? Is that a good deal? Look at the next thing right after that. The third thing. Those who give from the rizq that Allah gives them, but they will voluntarily give it back for sake of Allah. Let's think about that. Let's think about those three things. To believe even though we don't see. Establish our relationship, our connection, and then give from what we have for the sake of the one that we want to be close to in the next life. Let's think about that. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sabi atma'in Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa watta la shurika Allah wa ashadu wa muhammadin abdahu wa rasul Could you please come forward as much as you can? We have brothers in, sitting outside and there's no reason for that. We have plenty of room. You make room for them. We're asking Allah to make room for all of us in Jannah. Amen. Okay? We'll do that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's the room. Then you, you know, nobody's going to bite you. Get, get close. Come on. I love you guys. How many of you know we're going to have a live program here tonight after Isha? Live broadcast. And you can get discount tickets from the Imam. Yeah, I think they're free. Right? But only if you get them from him. 
Guidus TV was at the United Nations yesterday, and it was amazing. It was really, really amazing. They didn't let us record. I had a feeling that was going to happen. The Imam thought we would be able to do it, but I know how that works. You've got to have all kinds of extra clearance ahead of time for that. Everybody has to sign off on something, you know. But we did get to go in and use our phones. They record too, you know. So we did get some of it, alhamdulillah. The most important thing was that we had the opportunity to exchange ideas with other faiths, leaders of other faiths of other countries. That was very important. Would you like to know what happened? What did we find? Something amazing. All these leaders of all these faiths, even they had the American Indians from Canada were represented. He had his feathers and everything up there. His name was Kevin, I think. By the way, Kevin means Latif in Arabic. You know that? Yeah. So anyway, they all said the same thing. They said you don't blame a religion for what some people do. And it's wrong. Listen, this is not Muslim saying. It's wrong for the media to single out a religion to try to make it look like that whatever happens from some people is what the religion teaches. They said it. The same thing that we're hearing from our imams, the same thing that we're hearing from our teachers, they're saying it. And they said, imagine, they're telling us that something happens that's good, it doesn't make the news. Something bad will make the news. And they give some examples of some of the things that were very perfect, very nice, very clear. Even corrections that they sent and said, guys, you said the wrong thing. The media didn't cover it. It was Imam Shamsi Ali, who was the imam there at the United Nations, one of the imams. He brought it up real clear. He said, our success in this country, in this world today, is going to be dependent on how we interact with media ourselves. No media. No way. We have to have media. If you imagine how many Christian television channels, radio channels that are out there, if you imagine how many different newspapers being produced by various organizations, faith-based groups, and so on, you can see that we are very, very weak in that area. We don't have a single radio station for the all of America. We have some time in some places where we buy an hour, but it could be bumped off just like that. And we pay a lot of money for that hour to reach, what, 10,000 people, 20,000 homes, and maybe they don't even turn the radio on. To have our own television channel broadcasting in English 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even broadcasting events like we'll have tonight and Juma. This is a dream. This is a dream. And it was our dream until five years ago when you guys helped make it a reality when we first did that broadcast, the live broadcast right here. And it was set up, I think we had it set up right against that wall over there when we did it. And since then, non-Muslims, are watching it. Yesterday at the United Nations, I was shocked at how many people come up to me and said, you're that guy, what's his name? Yeah, well, I don't care what, if they know my name or not. You're that guy, what's his name? On the Guide TV, Guide TV, Guide Us TV. Well, that's all right. Alhamdulillah. And they're watching because they care. Now, we don't really get into the politics. We don't really get into the areas of putting other people down for their beliefs or disbeliefs. We touch a little bit on it. Of course, you have to. But we do focus heavily on what we have. We believe in one God. And we believe that that mandates to us, mandatory fodder for us, to show this in our lives. To be the best of neighbors, the best of husbands, the best of wives, the best of children, 
the best people in the neighborhood, the best teachers, the best preachers, and the best when it comes to relating information. I'm going to finish off with this and let you think about it. How important is it for a Muslim to tell the truth? Is it critical? Is it absolute? Can we twist the truth around a little bit when we want to? Can we play with it? Can we say like, well, you know, uh, or let's leave out some things so that people get the wrong idea. Say, it's not, it's not a lie. I didn't really lie. He just didn't tell all the truth. But what it does, it makes people believe something that's not right. That's also called deception. And Prophet ﷺ said, who deceives us, he's not of us. So deception is not acceptable. It's not acceptable at all for us to be among those kind of people doing those kinds of things. Tonight we're going to be talking about some of the things that will happen when you use certain pages of our websites that we have to really help your family and to help your neighbors to know more about what Islam is and what it isn't. So, in finish for this little segment here, I just want to remind you how important it is to keep our voice going and growing. Right now we have antennas free to air here in New York, broadcasting all the way over to here from Manhattan. It's free to air. You buy a Radio Shack antenna, screw it back there where the cable used to be, throw away your cable bill, throw away your satellite bill. You can watch Guidus TV for free. And you can tell other people how to get that. Or the apps that you can have for your phone. Works anywhere in the world. We also have the antennas in Los Angeles, in Houston, and in Dallas, Columbus, Ohio. And we want to put more. And you can help us do that. We'll talk about it tonight. And then finally, let's not forget we have the internet. And that's all over the world too. Guide us TV. So as you go out the door, pick up one of the bumper stickers and put that on the back of your car. If you don't have a car, put it on your neighbor's car when he's not looking. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make you laugh in the too long. That's my fault. Stuff it along. But do that. Do take a bumper sticker with you. And ladies, I sent uh, Sister Aya back over there with you. She's got some bumper stickers. And also, we have some pledge forms. If you want to do something, I highly recommend do something every month. It's better for you, better for us. Don't try to do a big flash in the pan today. Don't try to impress anybody. Just do something every month. But let it be between you and Allah and keep it going. Because this it will get you the maximum reward with Allah. And it will be ongoing. And then this will also help the channel to know what we've got going every month. I want to encourage you to be with me on this project and be with all of us in the Jannah. I mean, JazakAllah khair. And you know, we should make some dua. This is in the Sunnah of the Juma anyway. But I want to especially make this dua in the Arabic, but then give an understand how we can use it in our everyday life. We say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan, wa fila kirti hasan, wa kina adab nur Our Lord, give us the good, the higher in this life and in the next life. And there's no good in this life if it won't help me get to the next life. Give us this kind of hair, I mean. And then save us and, and protect us against the adab that we were talking about earlier. I don't want that punishment in the hellfire. Save us from that. I mean. So think about this when you say it. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan. Wa fila kirti hasan. Wa kin adab al nur. Rabbana la tu zikulu bana badda idha daytana. Wa ablana mela tu karakma. In akanta wa. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إن أخاهم دون مجيد الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي جعلنا مسلمين. I'm gonna ask the Imam if he'll lead this a lot because I have still problem with my knee. Make dua for my my leg and inshallah next time I'll be able to do it. But if you don't mind, we'll do that and let's 
do this salah as though it's our last, because you never know which one is the last. Jazakum Allah khair, and we'll see you tonight. Be with us, okay? Salam.